going on people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV. Video today about Arsenal's incoming manager, Mikel Arteta. I thought I'd look at five reasons why this could be a good appointment and five reasons why this could be a bad appointment. But before we get into it, um, keep supporting the channel, keep hitting that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments afterwards what you think. Are you happy with Arteta or not? And keep smashing that thumbs up button. Thanks for all your brilliant support lately. So everybody has got an opinion on this deal, Mikel Arteta. I myself have been quite vocal on this. But I thought we'd get into the facts. The reality is um, sometimes you don't know how good a manager is going to be until he's actually a manager. So maybe he will be a good manager, maybe not. But some people are saying things with certainty like he's going to be rubbish or he's going to be brilliant, he's the next pet. Let's get things in perspective, calm down a little bit and look at some reasons why he could be good and he could be bad. We'll start with the good reasons. Number one, he's young, he's hungry and he's determined to prove a point. Mikel Arteta will know that large parts of the media and the fan base are questioning whether he is up to that job. And that needs to use, um, he needs to use that as motivation to prove people wrong, to prove to himself that he's ready to make this step. And I'm sure, you know, the likes of Pep and Wenger and Pochettino have all commented on how good they think he will be. But again, the proof's in the pudding. He has to come in and prove that. You look at Pep and Klopp, they're, they're slightly younger, they're hungrier, they're energetic. And these are the managers that seem to be prospering at the moment. Simeone also. So hopefully, you know, his fresh ideas and his enthusiasm is something that will help the Arsenal team. Number two is the language. We know that Unai Emery struggled with the language barrier. We heard reports that players struggled to understand his instructions at times. And obviously Arteta being Spanish also speaks um, very good English. And also I've read speaks French as well. And they are the three main languages in the Arsenal dressing room. So communication should be something that is a lot easier with Mikel Arteta as manager, which always helps as a player. Number three, one-on-one -on -one coaching. You've read the reports. Sterling, De Bruyne, Leroy Sané, Gabriel Jesus and a number of other players saying how good Mikel Arteta is as a one-on-one -on -one coach, how he improves players, how much of an understanding he has of the game and the way he sees the game in the right way and that is something that a lot of these Arsenal players need, particularly you look at players like Guendouzi, Pepe, Tierney, very good players at a pretty good young age, Martinelli as well who still need coaching, who still need to improve. And this coaching could be vital to improving those players. Number four, he knows the club inside out. He spent five years at the club as a player. Um, he was captain. He played under Wenger, who was a class act, who represented the club in the right way, who wanted to play football the Arsenal way. And hopefully that is something he understands that when he comes in as manager, the fans want to see quality football. Number five, Pep Guardiola, quite simply the greatest manager in the world, although Klopp is pushing him close at the moment, um, but his methods are unbelievable. I watched the All or Nothing um, documentary that came out, I think, last season, uh, and, and one thing is Pep demands high standards. He, he's disciplined, he wants quality, and that is something that you hope Arteta has seen in Pep Guardiola and thought, I have to use that in my management career. The demands have to be there. You've learnt from the best, so bring that little magic with you into your management career and hopefully use that at Arsenal in the right way. Let's go for the reasons why Mikel Arteta might not be a good appointment now. Number one, no experience. Experience is something you can't buy in this game. Uh, as much as we're saying the older coaches are becoming a little bit more you know, redundant in the game now, um, Mourinho still won trophies, Ancelotti has won trophies. So older managers have still had success. And it's something you do not know as an assistant manager until you become the manager. How are you going to deal with it? As good as Arteta is, he doesn't have to make the big decisions. He doesn't have to decide, do I sign that player or that player? What formation do I play? How do I set them up? No matter what brilliant ideas Arteta has got at Manchester City, Pep has the final say. Pep's the one who has to take the blame when things go wrong. It's very different being the assistant to being the manager and having the responsibility. So that is something that, you know, we hope it doesn't like overall Arteta and that he can deal with the pressure. Number two, 
no set backroom staff. Most managers, when they go to a club, they bring in four or five, six people with them who they've known for years, they've worked with, and those guys are familiar with each other and they know how to get to work straight away. Mikel Arteta is going to have to create a backroom staff. There are rumours he's bringing two people from Manchester City. He will then bring two or three from outside of the club and probably keep a couple from within the club like Mertesacker and Freddie Lundberg. How are these guys going to connect together if, if some of them have never worked with each other? That's always a very interesting dynamic, the backroom staff, having your right-hand man, your assistant manager. Um, also, there's been rumours of Xabi Alonso. With me personally, that's someone I'd like to see on the coaching staff, but more just because I thought he was a brilliant footballer. Number three, transfer connections. Now, you've heard in the past people like Meza Ozil, Alexis Sanchez, Lacazette, Aubameyang, when they've joined Arsenal, they have all spoken about the influence that Arsene Wenger had on bringing these players to the club. When he speaks, you listen. And that's something that I believe top managers they gain that respect from players that, wow, you know, this, this guy's on the phone to me. I want to play for him. He's a legend. Mikel Arteta won't have that. No disrespect to him. He doesn't have a huge footballing reputation as a player. You know, he never played international football for Spain. Uh, and as a manager, obviously, he's never been a manager. So if he picks up the phone to a player, is he going to think, you know what? I'm desperate to play for Mikel Arteta. Maybe not. But you've got to hope nowadays a lot of these managers are not... As influential in signing players, it's more the director of football, people like Ralph Nelly and people like Edu. So hopefully that won't have a huge um, influence on, on transfers. Number four, the respect of the players. I've said before that this Arsenal dressing room is like a naughty classroom at school at the moment. And they need somebody to put them in shape. Are people like Ozil? and Aubameyang and David Luiz, are they going to listen to Mikel Arteta? Are they going to give him the respect? Meza Ozil was actually, I think, a teammate of Arteta. And he's going to look at that and think, well, you know, I was a better player than you when I was here. I've got a bigger reputation in football than you. Are they going to listen to him? Are they going to respect him? That is a huge thing in the dressing room. In any environment, you have to respect your manager. If you don't, you don't tend to do your best work. That's something that, you know, you question whether he can get that dressing room on side or not. Can he convince players like Aubameyang to sign new contracts and to commit the rest of their careers at the end of their careers to the club with Arteta as manager? And that's something that is going to be interesting to see. Number five is the fans. Will the fans give him time that he needs? Because you know the Arsenal fan base, at times we're not the most patient if he has a bad run, are we going to get on his back? I think he needs patience. You have to understand he's picking up a mess. I think it's much easier for Arteta as a coach to coach players like Sterling, Sané, players with huge potential in an environment where you're winning, where there's confidence, where players are happy. It's much different when you're coaching players like David Luiz, like Socrates at the back end of the career, how do you organise them? How do you improve players in their early to mid-30s who are actually on their way down in their career? How do you improve them? How do you set Arsenal up defensively to be more solid? But as I say, will the fans be patient? Or if we have bad runs, are they going to turn around quickly and say, do you know what, his lack of experience is now going against him? That is another question and only time will tell. What was interesting today as well, um, a well-known journalist in Italy has now come out and said that Arsenal had some sort of agreement in place with Ancelotti and then changed their mind and went for Mikel Arteta, which again, more questions of the Arsenal board. Was Arteta the man you really wanted or is it the guy you've ended up with? You know, it, the lack of clarity from the board, I think, has been extremely disappointing. But that's a whole other subject for a whole other video. Mikel Arteta looks like he's going to join the club. Um, whether you wanted him or not, um, he's coming. We've got to support him as, as Arsenal fans. And let's hope he can give the club something they need. A lift, positivity, better coaching. And let's hope we can rescue this season. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll be back with more content later in the week. Bless.